this is the slice, yeah. Wouldn't this be cool if you had this like a little driveway like this, you know? Don't even know this is back here. Probably even a post-apocalyptic. The zombies wouldn't even find this place, maybe. It's like a back shed. A little hell damage roof thing, whatever you call it. A little cover for the car. A little, a little, little garage kind of thing. So how it would work on this is you would count um, half of that when this would be from the day before or whatever, you would count half of that minus eight. So the algorithm is minus eight and half in at that. So roughly probably almost 11, maybe 11 miles or so. Oh, there's sauce and lemon. That's where I used to live. That was, those were apartments off of Darnell. They turned it into a modern art museum. There's there's a sign for sur surrealism and us, and that's the modern art museum turn off in Darnell. You turn down that way, and you turn up over that way. Well, you park over that way, and then I was, that was all wooden apartments. They were really nice, too. They had, like, a, a missing floor, though, or, or the floor, they had, like, this little floor that would come out, where you could, like, crawl down and go into, like, someone else's apartment next door. It was really crazy. There we go. I know, I was like, <laughs> hope that Eminem song doesn't play for too long. Well, you can still cut the sound, but sometimes thunder comes. Yeah, this is a weird little section right here. Really, I mean, kind of it is about restaurant delivery or just, you know, delivery in nature. I try to get into some specific details. I just look, I just like talking about film and, and performance and stuff. I just... I just like talking about it. It's just it, that's just part of who I am. It's not necessarily that I'm a film critic. I mean, I guess I could be. Yeah, I'd be that one right there. That's what he was talking about. Yeah, but he mentioned something about buzzing up, so we're gonna have to salsa limon, salsa limon, salsa limon, limon.
Yeah, I pressed it earlier. Appreciate it. Just need one more zero. I would have been down. This place. Well, almost. I was gonna say. I was gonna say almost, but pretty secure. Not not too bad on some of the other ones. But how to go through a little. Yeah, when you get in this that room, you go into a room, and then it's like just an elevator. That's kind of how we. That's kind of how ours was in New York. We had something so. So when I lived in Gramercy Park. 38 East, 21st Street, New York, New York, 10010, and it was like apartment 3A3. You would enter from the street. They had a camera outside, so when you'd go to this little lobby, you press the button, and then the elevator would let you in, and then you'd go up to your, your room, which was like a, a, a loft, or basically it was like one studio thing. The spiral staircase, though, went up to each one, I think each one you had to like knock or something like that. This one's pretty good though, compared to the others. Because you have this thing right here that's security and that door is probably locked and then that elevator's locked. So you would probably have to be pretty, pretty crafty. Pretty much a ninja. Bum, 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 bum. Did some thinking about Blue Velvet and No Country for Old Men, why those two are juxtaposed in the movie when they talk about them. For one thing, Blue Velvet is, is about the darkness of what could be done to us when we were very young. How that corrupts us in a violent way and that shines off that person. You know, when a person is uh, hurt as a, as a kid, it deforms their morality. I'm not going to say anything about Johnny Depp or anything like that, but the idea is Johnny Depp's always played, when he was younger, he played these, like, crybaby rebel roles. And I heard Johnny Depp interviewed by James Lipton, and he, he said his mother taught him that if anyone messed with him, he'd take the biggest rock and just, you know bash, you know, defend yourself like in a violent way. And whether his mother taught him that or not, we don't know. It, it just sounded strange. You know, wow. You got this mom, you know, if you did it in like a bio, you know, like a, a little kid. If anyone hurts you, you go and you get the biggest rock you can find and just smash them with it. And that leads to murder, which is the foundation of Judaism. The foundation of Judaism is Cain and Abel. Most all theologists will, and I've done a Cain and Abel mime, and most all theologists, people that study the theory of the Bible or the Torah, people that study theology, will tell you that Cain and Abel is the foundation of Judaism, the first burial, before, of course, the first murder. And Cain was cursed to be a vagabond, to be Marcel Marceau, to be Charlie Chaplin, to be Samuel L. Jackson. He'd walk the earth like Cain. But I'm trying real hard, Samuel L. Jackson says, his character. Or Wallace, whatever, I, I'll, I'll find his name later. But the character was Samuel L. Jackson because it's, it's an extension of him when he's doing Pulp Fiction. It's a fictional character, don't get me wrong. I met Samuel L. Jackson, I saw him talk. Cain and Abel is the foundation. And the bloodline goes all the way through David. 
We saw it today in the eclipse. A message from God. But Jesus Christ was more than a message from God. He was forgiveness incarnate and the ultimate form of mercy, of giving without question. And what's the opposite on Satanism? That's true power with no charity. True power without charity, and that's evil. Jesus Christ taught to give without question, to forgive without question. It doesn't matter what happens. John Wayne Gacy, forgiven. Ted Bundy, forgiven. FBI, everything they've done, forgiven. ATF, forgiven. Waco, forgive them. Timothy McVeigh, got to forgive him. Did we? Heck no, we didn't. Are we in an evil place? Yes, we are. Are we behind enemy lines? That's what he talks about in Once in a Lifetime. If you've seen the character, I believe it's Ash Cole. Yeah, my, my pen name. He's going through that in his head on that bridge right there. Bobby Skez and I filmed it. Bobby played Pastor Wreck. Actually really got in a wreck. I don't know. I didn't ask him to do that, but he got someone hitting from behind on the um, driving. Past, uh, Rob Rob always played the pastor. He or he always played in in, in in high school when we were doing drama. He was always a chaplain, you know, the the Catholic uh, priest. And I, I I played a Catholic priest opposite of him in Mass Appeal, which Bradley Cooper actually did uh, to audition for the actor studio drama school and got in. He used Mass Appeal. We we did Mass Appeal in high school. We were we were at that level. I st I was studying acting far before when he was in Georgetown. He's probably thinking about it, which is fine, and writing it probably about something about it or at least watching cable or something and then and then he, he learned it up really quick just like anyone can and move on if you want to be an actor just go out there and do it but why am i talking about judaism and why am i talking about jesus christ because those will affect you and the roles that you choose the thoughts that you have it'll anger the other religious person and i i sit there at a table and would talk about cain and abel being the foundation of Judaism to another Jewish person, and at that moment they would disagree with me. But yet the theology would, would 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 prove it. But they would disagree with me, and they would mention something about being the light of the world. I have no problem with with putting my hand behind the bushel. You know, you meet an actor like Henry Winkle, and you got You got to say there's something there's something good there. But Henry Winkle could easily play a character with a sword. You know what I mean? It was the Fawns, but a, but like the Happy Days Fawns kind of thing. One of the foundations of Facebook <laughs> because of, you know, thumbs up. And what I mean is that there's kindness in, in almost every religion, right? But what I was taught was that Christianity is the only one that focuses on an afterlife of paradise with the one and only Messiah. It's the only one that focuses on forgiveness, focuses on sacrifice, that your friend, you know, dying for your friend, you know, giving your life up is the ult ultimate like it's it's the most it's like the, the most honorable thing and that's what christ talked about and where was christ coming from that very foundation of judaism that started with what a murder and what did christianity have in it a murder what do we talk about on, on on the cross the crucifixion it's around a murder why are christians always so wrapped up in mystery like sherlock holmes and maybe the maybe barry with henry winkler and, and bill Hader? because of, 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 of Jesus Christ and Christianity being obsessed with murder and so is Judaism because we're a branch of that coming out of something right Hindi has other stuff like we talk about Buddhism all this stuff there's connection there's a connection between Judaism and Christianity there's the cross and the Mahadav in those military fields buried from World War II more crosses than the Jewish star but yet they're side by side and bury them side by side because there's a message going each way. What do they want? They want self they want self defense. They want to defend themselves and they'll fight for it just like David, who is one of their kings. Who is part of the bloodline of someone that's going to come back, fight for us. His name is Jesus Christ, Yeshua salvation. And he has already found the new wine because that's what he is, the blood of the Lamb. The lamb's blood was put over uh, the archway or the on the door of Passover so that the angel of death would pass over. What was the angel of death? death? It was the government of that time that would come and slay the firstborn child. The government. And that, that 
blood of the lamb was painted on there so that they would pass that door that had already been, well, they thought it had already, it was a secret message that was given to the Israelites to protect their first, bun, first, uh, first love, their first son, uh, born son. Jesus Christ being a son, right? Sun Kill Moon talks about the sons, the sons of God, who Jesus Christ represents because we are his ambassadors. We are agents of peace. And when I mean peace, I mean lower your voice, be respectful. Robin Williams would go wild. There was a sense of peace there. He knew he was a professional. He knew how to do it. And he had peace in his heart. And what a mur murderous way, you know, a way, a way to go out, which we don't understand why murder continues. But Jesus was the one that understood it the most and knew. And what did he say about Mary? He drew the line. He didn't write a lot, but he talked a lot. And he wrote in the sand, and we don't know exactly what he wrote. The theologists have theories. But the Pharisees and Sadducees, who were going to stone Mary to death for being a woman of the night, he stood up for her and said, wait. They don't do it in Islam. They bury them to their waist. They stone them to death with rocks. We have footage of it. They don't do it. They'll kill that woman in Islam. I don't know for sure on Judaism. They'll certainly sue her and take a lot of her money. In Christianity, we understand. It happens every day. Pastors' wives do it. Pastors' uh, daughters do it and are doing it right now and have to get on their knees and beg God for forgiveness. God. Have you ever seen a woman talk to the Lord? You know? And who wrote about it very well and very creatively? Stephen King, who is a Methodist. Shawshank Redemption. It starts with that whole idea, the foundation of betrayal. Now, I haven't seen Killers of the Flower Moon, which is uh, Martin Scorsese's masterpiece. But probably that's a different type of betrayal. He, he talks about betrayal. Betrayal is, is in the air, you know. But with, with Christianity, we learn that, that Judas and the will of God was there. And he had to betray because that was the will of God. All right, another night of delivery. We're going to go back see Linda and Kitty. Did you, you didn't, did you get kitty cat food? Did you get kitty cat food? No, it's right for you. It's by the TV. Okay, so did you buy him cat food? We only have uh, one thing left. We'll get two we only have, where, where's he at? I think I'm at. It's right on the TV. Oh, he, he's always in like a different spot. This cat is like the best actor. Right there in front of the TV. I know, I just found him a minute ago and my heart like jumped a beat. Oh, ah. There he is. Stock market. Where are you going to invest our money? I'd rather use the last hundred dollars of my money in the stock market. The stock market is basically like it's a roller coaster. It's up and down, up and down. Just like it was you have 40, aggressive and just you have like it always aggressive. will be. Yes, it will. It will always be that yes, way. Yes, it will. The stock market is Why is Bob Brain not telling me about the stock market? Because he doesn't want to share that share. Freaking. He doesn't want to share that share with because me. Because you scare. Pretty ass bitch. You scare the animal spirits. It's all about the economy. And you scare them away. And the next thing you know, a bubble's created. Like Facebook or Apple. And the people that did the shares with Apple back in the day where no one believed in Apple. Just like... All of a no. sudden... No, come here. Freaking trillion All dollar industry. All those shares Stop went up. Stock Martin. Stock Martin's the way to go. It's gambling. What What do you think of Sonic's doing in the stock market? You're with Sonic, right? Yes. 14 okay, years. Proud of it. So, Sonic. So what's it doing? Franchise. How do you think it's know. doing? I don't know. It's how doing do that. good. If they're paying they're $20 franchise. an hour. 
We're talking in about California. California. We're not talking is about Sonic Texas. in California. No. Where is it? I tell you what. It's a I southern see. thing. Yeah. So I'm no Sonic that. in California. Yeah, Johnny Ben. Eighteen subways down the drain. Fourteen dollars for an income tax check. Elbow. I gotta recharge this baby. Got it at Kohl's. Here's the brand. Man okay. up. Man two. Okay. Okay. Look at that. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Actor Studio. Drama School. Bradley Cooper's Nightmare. Ah, Hopperhead. I bet he's a good kisser. Hopperhead. Yeah, yeah, he'll kiss you with those buggy eyes like when he played in Maestro. Yeah, let me tell you. Matthew McConaughey, you don't want to forget. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. Oh, Matthew McConaughey. He likes his pickles no, no, no. from Oprah. Matthew McConaughey playing uh, 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 Leonard Bern. Is it Bernstein? Uh, Maestro. Lincoln, the all movie. Right, all right, all right, all right, everybody. Well, I got my I wand. Like I got you my like, wand. It's like a little kid. When I was a little kid, I had a toothbrush wand, and I was like, Everybody, we're playing the symphony right now. All right. You know what I'm saying? It would work. I think it'd be good. Use the accent. I don't know what exactly you talking about. What you talking about? Yeah, I'm Matthew not, McConaughey not. playing Leonard Bernstein any day. No, I'm talking about the movie about like Lincoln. He's about It's all commercialism. I'm telling you, Wall Street is like a roller coaster. It's Bad up and down. Just like Leonardo. in the 50s. Ooh, just like in Leonardo. the 50s. Or 40s. Mm. Remember, Leonardo uh, How's the pizza, dear? Only too salty. Oh well. I just forget her unpredictable behavior and turn the other cheek. Turn the other what? Cheek. Is that what you're having for breakfast? Check, check the outside of your face. Remember, Lucy was the only one allowed to make fun of his ankles. Ethel did it white, so they kind of cut it out a little bit. At least she's pregnant. Oh, and that's a certain Jurassic. I know, kitty, it's hard. It's a cross we have to bury. That's oh, right. Bury the sofa. You need to watch this. If I have to watch, kitty has to watch. Can you hold out right there? Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> kind of move it like here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a good It's got to come to resolution. I love Lucy. They used to call this the show. This was called the show. On CBS. On CBS? Yeah. yeah, it was, they referred to it as the show. I love Lucy. I don't kind of like season one or two. Ethel's a little, she's too nasally-ish. I don't know what's going on with her. about 12 minutes into the show. Is it real or is it a cover? And this is on SoundCloud. Is it real? It's real. Okay. You're pretty good at your 